Hello students. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are all doing well. Take care of your good health. In today's session, we shall understand a topic in biochemistry that is catabolism of amino acids under the chapter of metabolism of proteins. I am Dr. M. Bhushanam, Associate Professor in Zoology, Maharani Science College for Women, Bengaluru. The uh, learning objectives of today's session is to understand how amino acids undergo the process of catabolism and various disorders related to the abnormal catabolism of these amino acids. The content part includes under the catabolism of amino acids, the concepts of transamination and peptide linkage is what we are going to learn in today's session. So, before we understand the actual topic of transamination, let us first learn what are these proteins and why are they so important to our body system. Let us start now. The name protein is derived from the Greek word proteos. It literally means holding the first place or primary place. The term protein was coined by a Swedish chemist by name Jones Jacob Bergelius in 1838. We also know that our body cells are made up of various biomolecules such as carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids, etc. Of all the biomolecules, these proteins occupy a very special and a unique place as these proteins are major constituents of both the structure and functions of a cell. So, they are abundantly present in the cells of organisms. Proteins involved in the building up of new cells and even contribute for different structural organization uh, of a cell. They not only involve in the structural organization, but also helps in the functional aspects of a cell. Hence, they are commonly called as building blocks of life. So, down in the picture here, when we look at, we can see what is the major role played by the proteins, both as structure and maintaining the functions uh, within the cell. The chemical nature of a protein is what exactly we should understand in today's concept. When we look at the chemical nature of a protein, it is majorly composed of elements of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and most importantly the nitrogen. Sometimes in addition to these elements we may also find sulfur and phosphorus units and down in this slide is the general structural representation of a protein unit called as an amino acid, sorry amino acid. Generally an amino acid will have a central carbon is attached on one side with the carboxyl group or COOH group towards one side and this end is called as the carboxyl terminal. 
On the other opposite end to it is the amino group or NH3 or NH2 group, we call it as amino terminal. Students, this amino terminal is most important for an amino acid or of a protein. In addition to these two terminals or ends, we find a carbon attaching to the hydrogen towards one side and a, a variable group or R group we call it is attaching towards the other side is what exactly we see in the picture down in the slide here, where central C is the alpha carbon to which is the attachment of amino group towards one side and carboxyl group towards the other side, hydrogen towards the top side and R R variant group towards the down. So, this is a very basic uh, structure of an amino acid. Well, students, when we look into the proteins of an um, organism like a bacterium Escherichia coli, we find around 3000 different types of proteins in it. In human beings, we find 1 lakh different types of proteins. But remember, never the proteins of these two organisms look similar or identical. That is, proteins by structure and function are not identical and they are very, very specific and unique in their nature. So, here in the picture down when you look at this is how the proteins of one uh, organism and proteins of the other organism, they never show the identical uh, 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 features. Now, let us understand the biological function of a protein. Um, it could be in a cell or in an organism. The first major function is proteins acts as enzymes. As we know, enzymes are the biocatalysts for the regulation of a biological function or a physiological function in the body system of human beings or of any organisms. So, the, their functions are very, very, very specific as such. The second major function is proteins are used for transportation of biological molecules. As we know, oxygen is uh, oxygen being one of the important respiratory gas required for the body cells to function for the oxidation of food. It need to be carried from the external environment into the body system and should reach every cell for the biological oxidation of food. So, oxygen transport is carried out by the protein called as hemoglobin, which is present within the RBCs. Similarly, ferrous or iron ions by the transferrin proteins. So, down is the picture where you can find the structure of hemoglobin that carries oxygen molecules in the blood system. Next is proteins can also be used as storage components of energy. Students, as we all know that a cell gains its structural stability for their mechanical or stable conditions and growth, energy is must. So, this energy is stored in the form of storage components and this energy components of, en uh, of uh, energy components will be later on used during the emergency as and when it is required. The best examples here are ovalbumin of egg white and casein protein of milk are the best known um, proteins for the storage process. Coming on to the proteins that helps us to maintain the mechanical support. As we all know that every cell gains its structural stability 
or mechanical support by microscopic uh, units called as cytoskeleton. And this cytoskeleton is chemically made up of tubulin proteins. The tubulin proteins are very important. Similarly, ligaments that join bone to bone contains the elastin protein. We also find keratin proteins in the feathers and hairs. A tough protein called fibroin is present in the fibers of silk as well as fibers that we find in the um, cobweb or spider web. Proteins are also used for defense system. As we know that entry of any foreign particles into the body system are targeted, identified and destroyed by special proteins called antibodies or immunoglobulins. So, these immunoglobulins are chemically made up of proteins. Similarly, resin proteins are present in the venoms and uh, toxins which are produced uh, as proteins from the living organisms. So, down in the picture when you look at towards the uh, left side is the structure of an immunoglobulin globulin, um, um, G variety and towards right side is how this defense mechanism is maintained by this Ig proteins. Next is proteins are used for movement of muscles. And these proteins are referred as actins and myosins. Similarly, the movement of platinum in sperm is maintained by tubular proteins as what you see in the diagram or picture down in the slide. Proteins are also widely synthesized in the body system to regulate different physiological processes. They are collectively called as hormones. Most hormones are chemically made up of proteins. Similarly, we do find rhodopsin proteins in the retinal cells of eye that helps in the transmission of light sensitive nerve impulse during the door condition. So, after we understanding different functions related to the proteins, now we shall concentrate on the composition of these proteins. Students, as we have understood in the earlier slides that proteins are complex biomolecules when are broken by the process of hydrolysis. Hydrolysis means breakage. So, breakage of a chain of proteins into their unit parts called amino acids is what exactly call you co we call it as hydrolysis of proteins. So, ultimate units or end products of protein hydrolysis is the amino acids. Each amino acid is structurally consists of a central carbon atom as we have discussed earlier called alpha carbon. To this alpha carbon attaches a carboxyl group or COH group towards one end or one terminal. Hence, this end is called carboxyl terminal. Towards the other end, opposite end we find attachment of amino group, we call it as the amino terminal. The other two sides of the alpha carbon is attachment of hydrogen to its one side and a variable group called R group on the other side. Hope all of you have followed here the structure of an amino acid is. After we understanding the basic structural details of an amino acid, now we should understand another subtopic namely peptide linkage or peptide bond. Students, the complex unit of protein is also called as polypeptide chain or polypeptide molecule. 
when it is hydrolyzed or broken, it forms amino acids. So, what does it mean? A group of amino acids are interconnected, are linked together by means of a special bond referred as peptide bond or peptide linkage. So, to understand the structure of a peptide link, we need to know the chemical structure of an amino acid in a protein that we have already discussed in previous slide. So, we have a central alpha carbon towards one side is carboxyl group, the other side is amino group towards one side above is hydrogen, the other side opposite side is the uh, variable group. In other words, each amino acid is a single unit or a monomer of a peptide or simply we say many amino acids chain up to form a protein or a peptide. Students, if we represent a peptide or a protein by their amino acid units, we start with amino group towards one side at one end otherwise and a carboxyl group at the opposite end as what you see in the picture here. So, we find amino group towards one terminal, carboxyl group towards the other terminal in the chain of amino acids in a polypeptide um, chain. So, meanwhile this amino acids are linked in between by means of strong covalent bond called peptide link. So, during this link formation we find water molecules getting expelled out or released out. So, this process where the water is released during the formation of pep peptide linkage is called as dehydration process. So, water molecules are released and peptide linkage created or synthesized between the amino acids. So, down in the picture you can see how these amino acids are uh, brought together by releasing the water how it forms the uh, peptide linkage through the high dehydration process. So, to summarize a peptide is a chain of amino acids joined by covalent peptide linkages and show release of water by dehydration process as we will find down in the picture. So, number of amino acids that involve in a, a simple polypeptide chain is 2 to 50 as an average. So, peptides or proteins are important components of cells, tissues, hormones, toxins, antibiotics, enzymes, etc. If, a, if amino acids are not covalently joined, these structural and functional proteins do not uh, 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 get formed. So, this is the importance of peptide linkage. If peptide linkage is formed only then we find complexes of proteins that can have both structural stability of a cell and can involve in maintaining different functions of a, a cell. Uh, like we have hormone oxytocin that stimulates uh, glutathione that stimulates the tissue growth, melatonin that acts as B venom. So, like this insulin uh, 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 factor of hormone that controls the uh, glucose level. So, amino acids need to be linked to form peptide bond and to gain structural and functional stability. Well students, a long chain of amino acids that are linked by peptide bonds forms a peptide chain. So, amino acids gets linked by peptide bond between the carboxyl group of one amino acids and amino group of another amino acid. So, between these two functional groups namely 
a carboxyl group and amino group of two amino acids will interact to produce the peptide bond. When they interact, the reaction uh, uh, shows is dehydration or elimination of water molecules as we have seen in the uh, previous slide and even in the picture down. So, each amino acid of polypeptide chain that is formed is called as a residue. Students, I repeat, residue is a single amino acid of a polypeptide chain. It could be any amino acid. It will start with an amino group, ends with another uh, uh, a functional group such as carboxyl residue. So, that is how you find in the picture down here. Also, the most repeating amino acid of a polypeptide chain is called as main chain or backbone. I repeat students, each of the unit of amino acid of a polypeptide chain is called residue. When you find a particular amino acid which gets repeated more number of times in a polypeptide chain we call it as main chain or a backbone. The rest of all the chain residues of amino acids in a polypeptide chain is called as variable part or side chains. So, proteins in that way we find made up of amino acids of residue, amino acids of main chain, amino acids of variable part. Well, students, these proteins are weighed by their mass units called as Daltons. So, Dalton is one mass uh, uh, unit, one atomic mass unit. Students remember the formation of a polypeptide chain from amino acid units takes place in the ri uh, uh, ribosomal organelles of the cells. Initially, as primary proteins, and these proteins later show modification uh, in themselves and forms post translational modifications and it includes the processes such as uh, um, uh, hydroxylation, sulfonation, glycosylation, etc. Well, students, after we understanding the basics of the proteins, what the proteins are, how the amino acids uh, units are, what is the basic structure of an amino acid and how two amino acids are joined by means of peptide linkage. Now, let us understand another term involved in this session that is metabolism. Students, in simple metabolism refers to collection of physical and chemical processes of a cell. If these functions are related to the energy production, then we call it as energy metabolism. So, metabolism is sum total of all physical and chemical processes that is seen in cells. If they are involved in the energy production, we call it as energy metabolism. The metabolic activities includes either the biosynthesis of certain molecules or the breakdown or degradation of certain of molecules. When biomolecules are involved in the biosynthesis of certain of the uh, molecular components, we call it as uh, uh, anabolism. So, anabolism is synthesis of molecules, whereas catabolism is degradation of those substances. So, that is the main difference between catabolism and anabolism. So, degradation of lipids, we call it as lipid catabolism and of carbohydrates, we call it as carbohydrate metabolism. If so, the degradation of peptides or amino acids is called as what? It is called as catabolism of peptides or catabolism of amino acids. So, that is the topic that we are going to learn in today's session. So, in simple terms, a breakdown or digestion of amino acids that requires different reactions in it together is called as 
catabolism of amino acids or catabolism of proteins. Students, this catabolism of proteins or digestion of proteins includes common processes of two. One is transamination, the other one is deamination. Transamination is simply refers to transfer of amino group from one, amino, one amino acid to another. Whereas deamination refers to removal of an amino group from an amino acid. So down in the picture is the representation of the same. So here is the slide that shows how amino acids can involve in the breakdown uh, 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 to have transamination, deamination, degopoxylation, etc. So once in the process of tra transamination, you find amino group getting shifted from one amino acid to another. Deamination is a process where amino group is totally removed from an amino acid. And this is how generally the process of degradation of proteins starts with. So you have in your syllabus the first two processes for the understanding that is transamination and deamination. Let us now discuss in detail on the process of transamination. Trans refers to transfer, amination refers to process of transfer of amino group from one amino acid to another amino acid. So transamination is the first major step of the degradation of amino acid or proteins. Students, I repeat again, transamination is the first step of the degradation of amino acid or of proteins. So for catabolism of proteins, transamination is the major common step. So the word transamination can be divided into two words. Number one, trans, which means transfer of what group? Amino group. The second one is amination, which means amino group. So transamination refers to transfer of an amino group from the given amino acid to another. So as we discussed earlier, the chemical structure of an amino acid, it has a carboxyl terminal and an amino terminal. It is this amino terminal gets transferred from one amino acid to another. So amino terminal of amino acid can be shifted from one amino acid to another. So this transfer of amino group from amino acid is called transamination. Hope the concept is clear. Now, listen carefully. The transfer of amino terminal that takes place from a given amino acid is called as a donor or alpha amino acid. So, one amino acid that gives the amino group from it is referred as a donor amino acid or alpha amino acid. Now, the amino acid that receives or accepts the amino group to it is called acceptor amino acid or alpha keto acid amino acid. So alpha amino acid is the one that donates the amino group. Alpha keto amino acid or alpha keto acid is another amino acid that receives the amino group. So generally a keto acid simply receives an amino group or accepts the amino group during the process of transamination as what you see in the picture down. Now, we say that transamino acid is the uh, uh, transamination is the initial or start point of amino acid degradation or amino acid catabolism. It includes two amino acids minimum. One amino acid that donates amino group is called alpha or donor amino acid. The second is the amino acid that accepts amino, as, uh, amino group is called uh, acceptor amino acid or alpha keto amino acid. This process of transamination when we look at it is reversible. So it can have both the directional activation. So it is bidirectional process. Students remember here in the process of transamination the ammonia is just transferred but there is no total removal. So just the transfer of amino group is done instead of separating out amino group from the amino acid. 
During the process of transamination, one amino acid called donor will lose its amino group and the other amino acid that receives or gains amino group to it is called keto acid. So, amino acid that loses amino group becomes what? Alpha keto acid. So, after it losing, it becomes amino acid group which is totally lost on it. When you find an amino acid without an amino group with on it, we call it as alpha keto acid. So, it is now capable of receiving if somebody, uh, some other amino acid donates the amino group. So, alpha keto acids will now become ready for the acceptance of amino group because they lose the amino group on it. So, that is the speciality. So, amino group that gets transferred from one amino acid to another is what exactly you find in transamination. This amino acid that gains amino group becomes non-essential amino acid. So, in the transamination, what is required majorly is alpha keto acids. Why? Because they are the one which are capable of receiving the amino group if somebody donates to them, if some amino acid donates to them. In other words, essential amino acids becomes non-essential or vice versa. Students, essential I say because they tend to um, gain amino group. Non-essential is the one which gains the amino acid, sorry, and uh, essential amino acids are the one which loses the amino group. So, the complete process of transamination is catalyzed or controlled by groups of enzymes. Okay, the transamination process is controlled by groups of enzymes. Those group of enzymes that helps in transfer of amino group from donor to the accepted amino acids is called amino transferases or transferyl aminases. So, these are the enzymes which involve in transamination process. Let us now discuss the characteristic features of these enzymes called amino transferases. These tra amino transferase enzymes will catalyze the reaction of transamination. They are very very specific for a particular amino acid. However, these enzymes do not get activated independently. So, they require um, some coenzymes. Here, the amino transferase coenzymes, cofactor required, are called uh, pyridoxal phosphates. In short, we represent this coenzyme with capital P, capital L, capital P. So, PLP. So, it is an active form of vitamin B6 called pyridoxin. Students, I repeat, the enzyme amino transferase on their own cannot have any activity to perform. They require coenzyme. Coenzyme is a derivative form of vitamin B6 called as the pyridoxal phosphates or PLP. So, what we have understood is that amino transferases along with the vitamin B6 form the PLP that will control the function of transamination. So, PLP is the coenzyme that plus amino transferase together forms a complex that will control transamination. So, both together helps in transferring the amino group from its donor amino acids and this reaction commonly takes place most uh, 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 mostly in the tissues of liver than the other tissues of our body system. So, um, the reaction of transamination is most commonly seen in the uh, liver tissues. So, this is what you find. So, transfer of amino group takes place from one amino acid to another that is donor to acceptor with the help of complex of amino transferases and PLP. Fine. What are these keto acids generally? Alpha keto acids otherwise. These are amino acids that accept the amino group as what we have seen earlier. 
So, they are commonly seen in the transamination process. Examples for common keto acids include alpha ketoglutarate, axaloacetic acid and pyruvate. So, alpha ketoglutarate, axaloacetic acid and pyruvate are the best examples of keto acids which are capable of accepting the amino group if any amino acid transfers. The process of transamination takes place in two steps generally. Hence, it is called as ping pong bye bye mechanism. Ping pong bye bye mechanism. So, in the first process, the first step involves is the attachment of amino group of the donor amino acid to the coenzyme PLP. So, PLP will bind to the amino group of the donor amino acid. This happens in step 1 and it forms a complex. That complex we call it as pyridoxamine phosphate. In short, we call it as PMP. So, primary amino group of amino, donor amino acid will combine with the PLP to form the complex of PMP. This is step 1. In step 2 reaction, the amino group of PMP now gets transferred to the alpha keto uh, acid and simultaneously PMP now becomes PLP back. Hence, the process of transamination is called as double displacement process. At two places there is displacement or exchange processes C. So, hence it is called double displacement process. First, amino group will displace from amino acid to PLP to form PMP. So, in second step from PMP it will displace its play, uh, location from uh, PMP to the uh, alpha ketoglutarate or uh, alpha keto acid. Okay. At the same time PMP becomes PLP. So, double displacement process. When you look at reaction here, we find pyridoxin structure, PLP structure, PMP structure and you can find how uh, 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 the structural stability is given for these units when they combine with the amino group. So, we find here how exactly the process of uh, uh, step 1 where PLP will join with the amino group of the donor amino acid forming PMP complex and that PMP complex now will break joins the amino group to the donor I am sorry uh, acceptor or receiving amino acid and getting back its structure from PMP to PLP. So, there are two common trans aminases seen in the tissues of the body system students. They are number one alanine trans aminases and number two aspartate trans aminases. Students these are two major amino um, transferases that are commonly seen. The first one is alanine trans aminase. They are short in short are represented as ALT or ALAT or SGPT. This enzyme transfers amino group from alanine amino acid to alpha ketoglutarate or alpha keto acid. So, the donor amino acid here is alanine. The amino group from alanine amino acid will be shifted onto some alpha keto acid. So, this is done by the alanine trans aminases. The end products hence formed are glutamates and pyruvates. As we discussed earlier, any trans aminases uh, can be active only when there is a cofactor with it. Otherwise, none of the trans aminases are uh, independent by their activity. They, join, they need to join with the coenzymes. Here in this case, alanine trans aminases makes its coordination with coenzyme PLP. So, this process occurs in the liver. Okay, now, 
alanine becomes pyruvate and alpha ketoglutarate becomes glutamate. The concentration of this ALT in the liver is an indicator of how the liver is functioning. Hence, it is used as indicator for the diagnosis of disorders that are related to the liver. So, um, SGPT value or the value of alanine transaminases will indicate the help of or the functioning of liver tissue. So, down is the reaction where alanine plus alpha gate glutarate in presence of PLP and transaminases, alanine transaminases will form glutamate and pyruvates. So, same is the reaction shown. The second major transaminases seen are aspartate transaminases. This is the second most common enzyme of transaminases. It is in short referred uh, as AST or ASAT or SGOT. So, this enzyme will transfer the amino group of amino acid called aspartate to alpha keto acid. So, aspartate will become the donor amino acid to give its amino group to alpha keto acids. Thereby, the resultant products are axaloacetates and glutamate. And this enzyme called uh, aspartate transaminase also requires the same cofactor namely PLP. So, this process of uh, transamination which is controlled by aspartate transaminase is commonly seen in the heart tissue. Students, what does it imply? It implies that the disorders associated with the heart or heart tissue can easily be understood with the help of the um, uh, concentration of aspartate transaminase. Similarly, we do find uh, uh, the enzymes which are helpful for us um, to know or diagnose the inborn hereditary diseases that is errors uh, in the amino acid metabolism. The very best example is phenylcutinuria, where phenylalanine is transferred, uh, um, sorry, is changed into tyrosine. So, this process is something which we find with reference to inborn metabolism, okay, errors in uh, amino acid metabolism. Students, in both the reactions, what we have learnt now of ALT and AST enzymes, one common structure that we find is alpha keto acids or simply called as alpha ketoglutarate. So, glutamate or alpha ketoglutarate are collection centers for the amino groups in the biological system. So, the one that receives more of amino group in transamination is this glutamate or alpha ketoglutaric acids. They should be available okay, in the tissues of body system. In the reaction shown in the previous slides, we find how different transaminases help in the uh, function of transamination. An interesting factor here is that transamination cannot happen with four major amino acids. In simple, four amino acids do not involve the transaminases for transamination. Which are those amino acids then? It includes lysine, threonine, proline and hydroxyproline, which are catabolized by dehydrogenase enzymes. So, this is what uh, uh, we learned related to the concept of transamination. Let us recollect the concept that we have studied today students. Transamination is a process of transfer of amino group from donor amino acid to the acceptor. It is a reversible process. The process is catalyzed by enzymes aminotransferases. These aminotransferases are uh, um, uh, dependent on cofactors such as PLP or vitamin B6. They 
process of transamination occurs in two stages. Stage 1 primary amino group of donor amino acid will combine with PLP to form PMP complex. In step 2 PMP will transfer the amino group to the keto acid and becomes PLP. So, this reaction we call it is double displacement mechanism or ping pong bye bye mechanism of transamination. There are two major or common amino tra transaminases namely alanine transaminase and aspartate transaminase. Alanine transaminase will allow amino group from alanine to alpha ketoglutarate with the help of PLP and this occurs in liver tissue. Aspartate transaminase will allow transfer of amino group from aspartate to keto acid in the heart tissue. So, the amount of ALT available, amount of SGOT available or AST available will be indicator of what the functioning status of both liver and heart respectively. The transamination process do not uh, uh, proceed with the amino acids such as lysine, threonine, proline and hydroxyproline. So, the outcome of today's session is that we have learned how amino acids undergo catabolism and how abnormalities of catabolism can lead to disorders in the human beings as what we have learned in uh, phenylcutaneria and disorders related to uh, heart and the liver. Let us now try to un answer the multiple choice questions related to this session. Question 1. A person with phenylcutaneuria cannot convert feline alanine to tyrosine. So, answer is A. An example for transamination process is we find generally um, ketoglutarate combining with amino acid. So, that you find in reaction C. So, answer is C. Aspartate combines with alpha ketoglutarate to form glutamate and azeloacetate. So, what is transamination process? It is the transfer of amino group from one amino acid to another. So, amino group is removed from one amino acid is B. Transaminases enzymes are present in liver and heart tissue most commonly. Since heart is not here, liver is the right answer. Transamination is the transfer of amino group from a one amino acid to ketose acid. So, answer is B. Which of this is a hereditary disease caused due to error in amino acid metabolism? It is phenylcutaneuria. Answer is C. Students, the reference includes the web references of Wikipedia and Britannica.com and book references includes Animal Physiology and Biochemistry by K. V. Shastri and Biochemistry by Kossip. Thank you all students.